Hi, it's Chef Rick, and today I'm making Balmoral chicken. Right, so we're going to start off with this, which is a haggis. This one, they all look like this, so they're kind of all wrapped up and then they're cl uh, clipped at the edges. Some of them have a casing around them, which is a bit more like a sausage. Mine is a much more mass-produced one, so it's got like a plastic casing on the outside. Uh, wrap it up in tin foil. That's going to hold everything together as you cook it. Uh, you can cook these as many different ways as you like, but I always just like to boil them. I think you, uh, it, it's so easy. Uh, it's You get them really nice and hot, really nice and cooked through, and it's just a really simple method. I was trying in that pan to put enough water to cover the haggis, but the thing floated anyway, so just put it into a pan that will fit the haggis in and occasionally give it a little turn as it's boiling. You want to boil that for around about 40 minutes. Of course, all of the cooking times, temperatures, and quantities of everything will be down in the description below. Remove it from its foil. You can see the foil did its job, uh, so the thing hasn't split and there's been no water allowed to get into it. That is a cooked haggis. Uh, you can just kind of serve this as is. You would, if I was just serving it as is, I would try and keep it as a slice. But you'll see in a moment, kind of as you as you open a haggis, it does sort of fall apart and go like a mince on the inside. Uh, but we want to remove all of that absolutely gorgeous meat. So just you know, into a bowl like this. Uh, and just take off all of the outside layer because like I say on mine it's, uh, it's, it's plastic so you just want to get rid and you're going to get all of that meat in the bowl and that is a cooked haggis. So we're going to be making Balmoral chicken, which obviously involves chicken. This is chicken breast. Whenever you buy a chicken breast, like we show in all the videos, just feel it. Feel around if there's any tiny little bones or tiny bit of connected tissue that's uh, still on there. All you want to do is just remove it because you really want to have a really beautifully smooth piece of uh, chicken breast there with no bits hanging off it or any hard bits. So that's uh, one of the breasts prepped. And we're just going to butterfly it so keeping your hands above the knife so if that knife slipped now it's just going to go straight down into the chopping board and not into your hands into the thickest bit of the chicken you want to slice in uh, leave in a couple of centimeters at the end so you don't chop all the way through but you can see how i'm just scoring it and that's opening up there so that is a chicken breast that's been butterflied, so it's just been opened up. Um, that's perfect for things like Kiev's or whatever else. And we're just going to flatten it slightly, so we put a little bit of cling film over the top, and that's going to stop it splitting, and just give it a nice little bash with a rolling pin, or a saucepan, or anything you want at this point. You don't want to get this really, really flat. You just want to have it just, just slightly thinner than it is. Now we're going to take some of that cooked haggis, roll it up with your hands, uh, into like a sausage and line it up in the middle. That looks absolutely horrible. Um, <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. Wrap the chicken around the outside. At all times, you just want to kind of keep for forming it um, with your hands. So just make it shape nicely. I'm going to do some really, really thin. Get your butcher to get to slice your bacon really, really thin. Some thin, streaky bacon. Or if you just get it from the supermarket, just, of course, get a really thin cut. Uh, you want the seal of the chicken. So the join of the chicken breast where it's sliced is now like round the back on the chopping board. There, you see? So that's where you want the join, where you want your bacon to be. So you see, you'll just put one bit of the bacon on the join and wrap it around. This is, that's totally for presentation, just so it looks really, really nice and neat when serving. And if you keep all your joints on one side, it's just going to make it easier when you're turning it around as well, when we're going to cook it in the pan as well. So you just want to wrap that up uh, in streaky bacon. Doesn't matter if you use smoke, this is unsmoked, um, but you could definitely use smoked as well. And now we're just going to wrap that back up in cling film. and put it in the fridge just to firm up. So that's one of the chicken breasts there. Uh, again, that's two of them. And we're just gonna put those in the fridge up until we're ready to use them. Half an hour minimum, just gets them all nice and firm. So this is a really hot pan. We're just going to put some olive oil in there. And this is 
really really lovely and hot into that goes the um chicken seam side down so the join side down so that all that kind of we do, all you're trying to do is just get that to cook just get some color on the outside and obviously as that bacon cooks it's going to firm up and it's going to create like a nice sort of outside layer to it and keep all of that beautiful moisture inside because you used a fatty bacon sear it on each side just until it's brown don't be afraid to move it around a little bit you've obviously got four sides that you need to do that on so just give that a little a rub around the pan you can see how it catches and gets a really beautiful color on it if and i think i do this in a second i move one over and it's not quite colored enough that's all right just put it back to where it was but you want to get a really nice bit of color on each of these those sides and then if your frying pan can go in the oven you put the frying pan straight into the oven if your frying pan can't go in the oven you put it onto an oven proof you know tray like a baking tray and then in the oven they go in the oven for around about 40 minutes and that's the chicken done so we just want to leave that now just resting on the side whenever we're resting meat this doesn't need to rest for as long as it cooks of course just rest until you're ready to use it put some tin foil on there and that's going to keep everything warm uh neep santati so this is going to be basically potato and uh, and swede and mashed together uh potatoes first thing we're going to do is peel them and just chop them up into chunks because we're going to be boiling them and making a mash and obviously it's quicker and a bit more uniform if you boil them like that this is a swede or neep which is from turnip uh a swede is just a swedish turnip so swedes and turnips are pretty much exactly the same thing for this one we're probably going to only going to need half of it uh so we're just going to chop it in half first of all peel off peel the outside peel the outside layer and just like we did with a potato we're going to chop this up this is quite a tough thing to chop so if you are going to uh, chop down i think in a minute you'll see me push down the knife if you ever do use a knife technique like that make sure that your fingers are nowhere near the bottom of it because if you do slip down it's going to go again straight into the chopping board and not straight into your hand Whilst I'm chopping this, I will ask you, if you like my videos, please hit like at the bottom. It's just that thumbs up. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, please hit subscribe. I do three of these a week. So it's free for you, but it really helps me. So thank you in advance if you do choose to do that. Um, the Swede we're going to just put into some cold water like we did with the potatoes just prior to cooking. It just stops them uh, you know, getting any colour on them. And with the potatoes, remove some of the starch. So that's good. Uh, into a pan of boiling salt water. First thing we're going to do is add the Swede boil that for around about 15 minutes and then we're going to add the potatoes and that's simply because the swede is uh, denser and takes longer to cook than the potatoes because we want them to end up at the same consistency so that when we do add the potatoes after the swedes have had 15 we probably give those another 15 or 20 minutes just until everything's lovely and soft and then they'll both be at the same texture for mashing so we're just going to drain those off Uh, and now you can either just use a masher or I've got a potato ricer here. I mentioned in one of my videos ages ago, oh, I've not got a potato ricer. And then I got one from my wife for Christmas. She went, oh, I saw it on your video that you wanted a potato ricer. So, you know, amazing girl she is. But this is a potato ricer, so it's super easy to use. Just put the potatoes in there, give it a squeeze, uh, and it comes out really fine, helps to get rid of any lumps. So it's a yeah, really great little tool. So you can see once it's gone through the ricer there, uh, and we've got that's the mixed up swede and potato to that we're going to add a generous knob of butter some white pepper some salt and i would always now use a masher but you'll watch how easy it goes through it's just ridiculous because the rice has done all of the work but i find that the mash using a masher now for this stage kind of mixes everything to get together better especially as you've put the butter in there and that white pepper so you just get a really really nice mix by doing that once you've given it a few mashes of course you can then go to a spoon or a spatula give it its final little stir around but that's your neeps and tatties done uh, this is just to have some nice greens on the plate so we're just going to use a savoy cabbage which is a really really easy uh veg to do it's really cheap but it, it tastes delicious and it looks the part on any plate so just pull off the leaves and then if you take those leaves and that middle stalk that looks kind of like a, a tree trunk in the middle the white bit you just want to chop that out by going in uh, on one side and then the other 
that's the that hard bit that you don't want to so chuck that away and then you're going to be left with all these lovely cabbage leaves so now if you just take those cabbage leaves roll them up uh, nice and tight like a cigar and then just chop down cabbage which we're just going to steam you could boil it i use one of these steamers i got these in in chinatown it was like 99p and it's just i use it constantly it's so so easy uh fits on this saucepan that i've got here so i've just got boiling water in there you can boil that you can boil stock so that the steam that comes up through this has got kind of stock and is infused or you could put Chinese five spice so do whatever you want but we're just going to keep this really really simple and we're just going to steam that for around about 10 minutes then we're just going to put it in a pan with a little bit of salt a little bit of butter and that's our uh, greens and now the whiskey sauce this is the showstopper from this dish so the first thing we're going to do is put some butter in a pan and melt it then we're going to add the whiskey so you're going to let that heat for a little bit um, just so there's lots of vapor coming off it because we're going to light this and burn off the alcohol so you'll see that now we've got like um it's fairly kind of liquid that's a whiskey and butter mix you can see all the steam that's coming off it now we're going to light it just use a normal lighter uh, i just had a blowtorch there so that is actually now on fire you'll see in a moment because we'll turn off the lights so you can really see that the flames are there and there you go so you can see that that's burning really really nicely don't be scared of this uh, it's it's not going to explode. It can't pour anywhere unless you choose to pour it anywhere. So obviously you're not going to do that. But just work it around. Look at that. That looks nice, doesn't it? Really cool shot that as well. I, <laughs> I was editing it. I thought that looks absolutely great. You can see you just move it around the pan, and all you're doing is burning off the alcohol at this point. So it might be a little bit intimidating if you've not done anything like this before. But it's nothing to be scared of. It's not going anywhere. Um, and all you want to do is just keep rotating up the, the saucepan like that. That's just going to show you that you've got the flames in there. And you'll see before you know it, you just want to, you'll go back through, you'll go to rotate the saucepan again. You can already see that it's just about to die off there. Still got a little bit of life in it. I've left all this in just because it looks cool, of course. You can see as I'm rotating at that, no more flames. So that's it. All the alcohol's burnt off. So now you've got like a, a whiskey infused butter there with no alcohol in it at all. So it's just pure, pure flavor. And that's now going to be the base for our whiskey sauce. Uh, to that, we're going to add some English mustard. I'm sure there's going to be some angry Scott giving me like thousands of disli <laughs> dislikes uh, for adding a, an English mustard to a, a, what should be a, a really Scottish sauce. We're going to add some chicken stock and some double cream. I use English mustard there because I think it just adds a tiny little bit of colour. Uh, any mustard would do, but English mustard really is, in my opinion, the best for a sauce like this. So it's going to keep mixing that round on a nice low heat and it will start to thicken itself and then you want to get it to the stage that you're happy with thickness wise uh, for serving now i want this to be as thick as when they say um, you know coating the back of a spoon which i'll show you in a second oh yeah use a whisk as well so if you're using stocks and creams uh, and butters in a sauce you really want to keep those whisking and that's going to emulsify everything keep it together like an absolutely beautiful smooth rich sauce it's not going to split in any way give it a little test not with your finger like that's a bit naughty use a spoon see what seasoning it needs so just gonna add some salt and black pepper and give that a whisk now we're gonna take that off the heat my stove stays really hot after that so this sauce is still got some heat underneath it but obviously not the temperature that it was cooked at uh, but it's just gonna keep thickening it ever so slightly and keep it nice and warm just until we're ready to serve uh, that sauce is as oh here we go yeah i'll show you what i meant by coating the back of a spoon so, you, so it would be a metal spoon you put in there and literally if you can just do that run your finger down the back then that's coated the back of a spoon so that's going to be a really beautiful textured sauce what i will do again is add a splash of whiskey and not we're not burning any alcohol off this we're just going to whisk that in and that's going to give it a, a tiny bit of a punchy whiskey flavor hardly any alcohol in it of course don't worry look how diluted it is by cream and stock and everything else but it's just going to really give it that little little taste at the end of, of gorgeous whiskey the chicken 
Now we're just gonna slice it in half just for the diner so it looks nice so they can see everything that's inside. It's absolutely fantastic, this one. The core of it, which is that incredible haggis, is full of rich, meaty flavor. The chicken is super moist, delicious, perfectly cooked. The bacon adds a tiny bit of crunch to the outside, but and obviously that lovely flavor of bacon. Let's just plate it up now. So we've got the neeps and tatties, we've got the chicken down there, some of our greens. Serve it with some of that whiskey sauce on the side for the diner. And of course, it's a fancy dish. This is the queen's favorite, a nice champagne flute of iron brew. Uh, that is Balmoral Chicken. Uh, it's a fancy way of having haggis. It's absolutely wonderful. Everyone loves it. Thank you so, so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. See you on the next one.